And praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's stand to your feet. Let's give God praise in the house. Would you do that? Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, we welcome you, God, to the house, God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. Praise God. Happy Father's Day to every father, every grandfather, every stepfather, every puppy father. We welcome you all here and thank you for um, all that you do. Amen. Praise God. Well, the Bible says in the second chapter of Acts that they a people had gathered and they were in one place and the Bible says they're in one accord and something amazing happened the Holy Ghost fell I don't know what you've come on your mind this morning but if you'd get in one mind in one accord something amazing could happen in the house amen <laughs> praise God go ahead and give the Lord praise again thank you Jesus <laughs> thank you Lord hallelujah Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. We have a, a short video this morning honoring all of our, our fathers. We want to watch that right quick before our praise and worship Gentlemen. group comes. Gentlemen. Welcome to another dad battle. Now is anybody, and I mean anybody at all, willing to face our champion? Gentlemen, my son joined the golf team at school, so I bought him an extra pair of socks in case he gets a hole in one. Hole in one. His dad jokes are so effortless. See that? That's why he's the champ. That's nothing. The other day, my daughter said a good Christian dad would buy her a car. So I said, well, a good Christian kid would walk, because that's what Jesus did. Fathers! Listen up, son. Just because God picked your nose doesn't mean you should. <laughs> when you start paying the bills, you can make some of the rules. Come on! Yeah. Yeah. Hold up! Who touched the thermostat? Yeah. yeah! That lawn isn't gonna mow itself. Let me stop what I'm doing and fix your boredom. Hi, Hungry. I'm Dad. <laughs> I love the smell of Home Depot in the morning. Oh, yeah. 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 Just wait till your mother gets home. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What? Pull my finger. Oh. Oh. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. You got this. Come on, Chan. Nah. Just rub some dirt on it. Oh. 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 Proud of you. You can do hard things. I love you, no matter what. When God made you, He made something very special. Proudest day of my life is the day you made me a father. I thank God for you every time I get on my knees and pray. And again, who 
gives this woman? No. Oh. <laughs> Don't you look at me. You look at me. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Oh. 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 Again, happy Father's Day to all of our, our fathers. Let's give them a hand. Amen. I want all of our fathers to come up to the front here. We want to uh, show our appreciation to every father. If you'll just come up and, and stand, and we have a, a, a gift uh, for you. Come on. Don't be shy. Some good-looking dads coming. Amen. Praise God. I want you all to find a, a, a gift bag there, and they're all uh, pretty much the same and a little different, but uh, grab one if you would. And we want, we want every, every uh, uh, daughter, every son, or, or every wife to come and just give the father a hug, your, your, your husband, your, your uh, uh, dad. Find them and come and give them a hug. Tell them how much you love them. Would you do that for the next few minutes? We want all the fathers to take two bags. Come back and get another bag. All right? Every father get two, two bags. We appreciate you. Let's hear it again for our fathers. Come on. Give it up. We also want to give honor to our pastor this morning. He's the father of our church, and we appreciate him so much. We have a gift from him from the, ch from the church, from Turning Point Apostolic. Um, there is a gift in here, and it is for a weekend away in Lincoln with his new grandbaby. So we want him and Sister Melissa to go and get some re relaxation after the fireworks stand. So we just love and appreciate him so much. She was going to cut us loose from the fireworks stand there for a minute. <laughs> no such luck. Praise the Lord. Worship with us.
the Lord again today. We've got a few announcements. Um, this week will be, uh, we will not be having a Wednesday night service. We'll be doing work nights. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Work nights at the fireworks stand. Please come and help if you can. Saturday, we start selling. Uh, We'll have 10 days of selling fireworks, so any help that we can get is much appreciated. Uh, we have to be there 24-7 as of Friday night, so um, just let us know what you can help with. Um, <clears throat> then, looks like tomorrow we've got a birthday. Happy birthday, Freeman! And this upcoming Saturday is Augie's birthday. And we just had a birthday. Uh, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, Henry Hanish. I, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, we're going to sing. Okay. So let's sing happy birthday for all of these. One more uh, thing about the fireworks stand. Afterwards, on July 6th, we will be having hamburgers, chips, and fireworks together at the Gearing Campus. <laughs> it's always nice when we do it out there. It's uh, got the big open parking lot and the big concrete pad, so it makes a great viewing place for doing fireworks. Um, we always uh, enjoy the time immediately after the fireworks stand there. Um, we'd like to welcome all of our guests. I know we've got a few visitors here today, and uh, uh, it's good to have uh, uh, my grandma Masher. Uh, it's good to have April, uh, Terry, and Diana. It's good to have you and uh, Terry. And then uh, we've got brother and sister Colgrove, all the way from Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Um, and Brother Colgo, if you'd like to come up here, we're going to be taking offerings soon, and I understand he's doing a song with Sister Jen. So, 
On that note, actually, let's all stand, and we're going to take up our Sunday morning tithes and offering. And let's read our offering declaration together. That's available on the back of the bulletin if you need it. As we bring in today's tithes, offerings, and over and above giving, we are believing for a supernatural release of God's favor over every area of our lives. Jobs and better jobs, checks in the mail, inheritances, secure investments, scholarships, creative ideas, finding money, healing for our spirit, soul, and body, deliverance to the captive, salvation to the lost, and an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We are blessed and we will be a blessing to others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you again for all of your wonderful blessings. We just ask right now that you would bless this offering, bless both the gift and the giver to your work. In Jesus' name, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be out here visiting. Um, speaking of dad jokes, I'm so proud of my kids that my suit coat button fell off this morning. <laughs> um, we've had a wonderful week of visiting. Um, Brother Rott had mentioned he wanted me to say something. I just want to just say this little thing before we go into the song. Um, I was reading in Exodus how Moses went up the mountain into the cloud and and then how the children of Israel followed the cloud through the wilderness and later on when you read in the New Testament everybody wanted to follow the crowd the crowd followed Jesus for the loaves and the fishes but when the doctrine got a little tough they left but then the Bible says that uh, as he stood on the Mount of Olives he started to ascend and a cloud received him out of their sight you can follow the crowd if you want to, but I tend to intend to follow the cloud. The song that Jennifer's going to sing, my dad wrote several years ago, and it's about what Jesus did to purchase our salvation. Where would we be if he hadn't done what he did for us?
All right. We're going to take up any prayer requests that we might have. Um, let's remember, uh, please remember uh, Sister Jen's <coughs> uh, sister, brother-in-law, uh, Sean and Andrea. They are traveling back to North Carolina. Um, let's also keep in prayer. Uh, brother and Sister Colgrove will be traveling back to Michigan uh, tomorrow. Uh, pray that God will keep his hand upon them as they travel. Uh, yes, Pastor. Yes, sister. Okay. Yes, brother Arnold and uh, sister Patricia are traveling as well. Okay. All right. Let's take these before the Lord. And if you have a special need, if you'd like to be prayed for, uh, if you're in need of a healing, just uh, please come forward, and we'll have Pastor anoint you and pray for you. Jesus, thank you again. You are so wonderful, Lord. You've heard all these needs. You know every request. And we just ask that you would work in them, Lord. Jesus, we ask that you would reach down and touch those that are traveling right now, Lord. We ask that you'd keep your hand upon them. For Sean and Andrea and the kids, we ask that you'd keep them safe. For Brother and Sister Colgrove as they leave tomorrow, keep them safe as well, Lord. For Brother Arnold and Sister Patricia, keep them safe, Lord. For, for those who are sick and in need of a healing, Lord. For uh, Sister Flo, for her daughter Dorothy. Jesus, we ask that you'd give them a touch. And then uh, for the unspoken requests, Lord, you know the needs and you know those situations. We just ask that you'd work in them. Have your will and your way in those situations, Lord. Jesus, thank you for hearing our needs and thank you for being the God who answers our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. All right, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, ask pastor to come forward and bring the Sunday message. Uh, you may be seated. And praise the Lord, everyone. Let's go ahead and give God a mighty praise in the house again. Isn't he good? Hallelujah. There's none good but the Lord. Right where you are, let's go ahead and lift him up just for a few minutes and give him praise in the house. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We love you, Lord. We welcome your presence, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Again, it's Father's Day, and, and happy Father's Day to everyone. It's so good to have each and every one of you here, and we're honored to have a, a brother and sister, Cole Grove, who uh, pastor in Sault Ste. Marie. It's always good to, to see them, and fellowship with them. Amen. Well, I'm believing God to, to speak something powerful this morning to all the fathers, to all the families. I think there's something in here for everybody this morning, and I, I'm just believing God for uh, his presence here in the house. Amen? Amen? If you have your Bibles, I would like you to open them up and, and turn with me to the book of, uh, the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. Amen. And I, I'm going to weave in and out of, of this uh, chapter and uh, just put your thumb in, in this chapter. We'll be referring back to some more verses, and I'll try not to be long this morning. But I, I do believe what I'm going to, to, to share this morning is, is uh, worth uh, taking some notes, if you can, and, and uh, I, I'm going to preach because it's a pointed message, and I want to preach to you on how to slay your giant or how to be a giant killer. How to be a, a giant uh, killer. And I, I, I believe that there's a beautiful outline of what has to happen if you're going to uh, be a giant killer. Because when you look at what happened that brought the mighty victory... We, we all know the story of, of David and, and, and Goliath, uh, David versus Goliath, but really it was God using David, God using David to defeat Goliath. And you have to understand that there are some very clear steps that he took and, and, and learned and, and transformed an ordinary man into a giant killer and I want you just to see that with me this morning. Let's go to verse 20. 
of um, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. When you're there, say amen. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Praise God. Um, keep your Bibles open to that scripture text. Uh, we'll come back to it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, again, we're so grateful to be in the house this Father's Day. We thank you for this is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I pray, God, that you just speak to us out of your word, God, and let it go down deep. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Lord bless you. You may be seated. I believe that God has called you and I to not only face giants, but to kill them and to defeat them, amen, and destroy them. And if you read this story, the Bible said that Goliath made a challenge. And he said, if I win, then you and your army has to serve me and my army. So we are not just fighting the giants that come against our lives for ourselves, but every giant, everybody say every giant, Every giant that we face and every giant that comes into our life and against our family, it's not just about you. It's about your future. It's about your family. I wish there was a witness in this Presbyterian church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Notice that if David had, had, had lost... If he had lost the battle, his family would have become enslaved. His children become enslaved. The next generation, the future of David and all his people were dependent upon him defeating Goliath that had come against him. He was not only fighting for himself individually, he was fighting for his future and the future of his family. And that is what we have got to understand about the giants that, that, that uh, we're, we're fighting. We are fighting things, and it's just not about us and our personal victory uh, that we get over, uh, you know, just some situation, whether it, it may be uh, fear, uh, whether it is discouragement, whether it may be low self-esteem, whether it's addiction, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's lust, whether it's private sin, if you don't get the victory, listen to me this morning, if you don't get the victory, it affects others. I said it will affect others. Because Goliath said, if I win, then I get your families. They're mine. I get, basically said, I get your generations. And, and if you win, you win for generations. To come over us, all the Philistines. This, this is so important, and I want to get you. I want to give you this morning some some qualities that have to be real in your life and have to be real in in my life. If you're going to be a a giant slayer, number one, the Bible said that David. Notice what it said. His father Jesse told him to go down and and take some bread and take some cheese. This this is right. Uh, before a few verses that we read from, he said, take some bread and some cheese to your brothers and, and see how the battle is going. Now, what's interesting about this is there's a little lesson in this because David, in uh, chapters before this scripture text, had already been anointed king. Already. He was still a young boy, perhaps in his in his teens, he had already been anointed king of Israel, but he had not yet been appointed. But when his father said, go down, and I want you to take this uh, bread, and I want you to take this cheese, uh, it wasn't a very important assignment. And I want you to be a servant to your brothers. I want you to go down uh, to the battlefield, not as a king. I want you to go down there carrying stuff and, and giving them something to eat. 
Notice the first point that I want to make is this. Giant killers are submitted. Oh, it's getting awful quiet in here. I said giant killers are submitted. Hmm. Because at that moment, he had to make a, a decision. David could have got up, reared up in his father's face at that point and, and said, who do you think you're talking to? I've been uh, anointed to be king of Israel. Who, who do you think you're talking to? The prophet Samuel prophesied that I would sit on a throne and that it would never end. Who do you think that you're speaking to? I, I'm, you know, I'm too important to take this bread and this, this cheese. Call, call one of the servants to do that. You know, somebody should be carrying me on their shoulders and, and, and blowing uh, trumpets. Romans 13.1, let's put that up on the screen. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the keys to be a, a, a giant slayer is that you and I must be submitted. Amen. To authority. His dad was his authority. I've never seen an unsubmitted giant killer because giant killers are submitted. I said giant killers are submitted. Come on. Giant killers are submitted. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to get up under what God has put over you or you'll, know, you'll, you'll never get over what God wanted to put under you. Amen. And and you don't know if you are unsubmitted until you have the opportunity to not be. And in that moment, I think it's something that we uh, race right over. But I've never seen an unsubmitted giant killer. You can have talent because David had talent. He was a remarkable musician. Amen. Uh, he, he, you can have a calling. David was called. You can have the anointing but if you are not submitted to authority such as parents such as spiritual leaders the bible says to submit themselves to spiritual authority or to higher powers and the king james version put puts it at it, it, at that in other words how you react to authority determines whether or not you will ever slay giants and it's very important to know that. Somebody say amen. amen. So submit yourself and the giants, they're going to fall. I said the giants are going to fall. Anybody here with some giants in your life right now, they can fall. They can fall. They will fall. Submit yourself to the word of God. Submit yourself to the authority of godly people that God has put you around. Amen. And, and, and open the door for you to sit under. Submit yourself, and if they are wrong, God will deal with them. But as you submit, it empowers you to slay your giants. Watch how you talk to your parents. Watch how you speak to people that God has put in authority. Because the devil knows that you just got weakened tremendously on the battlefield when you are not in submission. The devil knows that. Number two, the Bible said he rose up early in the morning. Amen. I believe that we need to rise up early and get to the house of the Lord on Sunday morning. Come on, somebody. Now that we are... Uh, uh, able to, to, to gather in, in one mind and one accord, we need to get ourselves up early on Sunday morning. Don't ever think that you're going to be a giant killer if you can't make it to the house of the Lord. Giants will come and they're going to take over. I still believe you need to get up early, go to church and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for the giant killers to rise up early. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's time to rise up early. I was glad 
Come on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Come on, give God some praise in the house if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. Everybody say, Lord, I'm getting up. If you're going to kill a giant, you got to rise up early. And this speaks of discipline. Amen. If you can't get up uh, and read your Bible, you will never kill your giant. If you can't get up and begin to pray, you are not going to be able to slay any giants. I believe, I believe praise is a discipline. I believe praise is a discipline. It has nothing to do with emotions. Amen. It has nothing to do with I feel like doing. you got to go beyond doing what you feel like doing sometimes. Hallelujah. When it says that he rose up early, it means that he had a discipline in his life. Praise God. You will never be a giant killer if you are lazy. Amen. you got to get up and you have to do what you have to do. Praise God. God will not bless lazy people or stingy people. And if you're going to kill a giant, you got to get up. And the Bible says he rose up early. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, lazy people don't kill giants. Number three, giant killers get up. I like the fact that the Bible says that they, 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 they came up out of the trenches. They came up out of the trenches. You, you know that a giant can be nine feet tall, whatever he was, uh, but the trenches would be, uh, you know, like that ditch that they, they dug uh, to, to, to get down and to defend themselves and, and, and feel like they had a safe place, and, and they would you know, peek up out of the, the trench and to, to look at the enemy. And sometimes even though a giant might have been nine foot tall, if you were down in the, the trenches, it looks like he's 15 feet tall now. Because the enemy coming is very strategic when he comes to attack you and me. Notice he came when they were in the trenches. So when they looked up and, and saw Goliath marching, he actually looked bigger than what he really was because they were down. There comes a moment where the trench is a low place in your life, in my life. And the enemy always knows when to show up. When you are at your lowest point. The enemy doesn't show up when you're high and, and you know you're full of faith. He stays away. But he loves to get you down. And when you're down below the trenches, that's when he shows up. He's strategic at his appearance. The enemy was big because they, they were down. If you would just get up, you would find... It's probably not as bad as you thought it was. If you would get up, you'll find out the devil is not as big and he's not as powerful as you thought he was. If you will get up, you'll find that that spirit that has your child is not as tough as you thought it was. Because God has not called you, God has not called me to be in the trench of depression. Hallelujah. He has called you to get up, and, and giant killers are not only disciplined, and giant killers are not only submitted, but giant killers get up. Hallelujah. Everybody just stand up. Amen. And just let's take a praise break right now and give God some, some praise and glory in the house that you're up, that you're here in your right mind. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. At some point, I'll have a bad day. You may be seated. Thank you. Bad things do happen. I, 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 feel, I will feel sorry for myself and cry in my, in, in my Starbucks. And at some point, i got to get up. And If I'm a giant killer, aren't you tired of 
of being down and looking up at a, at a big enemy, I'm going to tell you how to shrink the enemy. You start pulling yourself up by praising the Lord. Amen. Pull yourself up by praising the Lord and focusing on God and declaring the word of God and praying in the Holy Ghost. You are not a weakling. You are a giant slayer. Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost and the Lord will lift you up. I said the Lord will lift you up. Hallelujah. And as you go up, guess what? The enemy goes down. He gets little. He gets smaller when you go up. Praise God. And, and, and looking at your biggest enemy will determine whether you will have defeat or whether, whether you will have victory. I'm having some victory. Praise God. I'm going to have victory in Jesus' name. And number four, notice this now. The Bible said that something significant when, when, when Goliath came and they got out of the trenches and, and started shouting for the battle. Giant killers don't stay silent. Number four, giant killers don't stay silent. If you're going to be a giant killer, I, I've never seen a, a giant killer uh, that was silent. Giant killers shout. Giant killers praise. Come on. Is there any giant killers in the house? Come on. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Giant killers say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Giant killers lift their voices for victory in their family, for victory in their home. They lift their voices in prayer. They lift their voices in confession of God's word. They begin to shout the promise is bigger than the lies that the enemy is bringing. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bigger than the lies that the enemies are shouting across the field. And you can't be a giant killer and uh, be silent. Hallelujah. I, I feel it uh, here in this house. Amen. This morning. The enemy wants to, to silence us. And the, the enemy wants us just to, to back off. And, and to sit back. And, and just go ahead and take it. And, and, and take it again. And take it again. But I, I like what Joshua was saying, amen, in Joshua 6.1. He said, he said, shout, for the Lord has given you the victory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Anybody here in the house need some victory? Yes. There's a secret there, secret there for you. Go ahead and shout for the victory. Yes. Come on. Go ahead and shout for the victory. If, if you need victory in some area, some way in your, your life, go ahead and shout to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Zechariah chapter 4, 7. I, I, I like what it said. He said, shout grace, grace. I go by and, and, and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll say that prayer. Grace, grace. on my brother. Grace, grace. Grace, grace. I, I, I like that. And, and he, it's talking about a mountain in, 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 in his life and, and it, it becoming a plain. Amen. And, and I just, I'm going to claim any mountain in my life to be removed. Praise God. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because God already laid a foundation in whatever hell is trying to stop in your life. It's already there. You just need to start shouting because giant killers are shouters. Somebody give God a shout again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. David said, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm tired of people minimizing our praise. Saying, you know, it don't take all that. You don't have to be loud in church. Oh, it requires all that. I just gave you a scripture for that. Lift your voice and begin to talk trash back to the enemy. I think we need to do that too. Amen. Giant killers are shouters. Giant killers understand and learn how to shout in low places. Praise the Lord. Anybody here in the low place, I just dare you to open up your mouth and, and just say, Jesus is Lord. God is on my side. 
Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. This is what giant killers do. They don't go into battle moping and, and, and uh, feeling all beat up. Notice something else, number five. I want you to see this in our text. Uh, can you put verse 25 up there from our scripture text? And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and he will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in, in Israel. They just unfocused in this scripture on the battle into the reward. They got their mind off the battle and, and focused on the reward here in verse 25. What was the reward? Number one, you get to marry the king's daughter. She was gorgeous. Number two, you get riches. And number three, you never pay taxes on all that you inherit from being part of the royal family. That's in verse uh, 25. Let's put up 26 uh, through 30 if you have that. And David spoke to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reports from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Here it goes again. And Eliab is eldest brother heard when he spoke unto the men and Eliab's anger was kindled against David and he said why camest thou down, down hither and whom shall hast thou uh, left those few sheep in the wilderness he's putting them down already he's, he's nobody he's nothing he's only got a few sheep and he doesn't have any important job he's putting them down I, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. 29. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Verse 30. And he turned from him towards another and, and spake after the same manner. Okay. He's, he's, he's talking about the reward. And now the people answer him again about the same thing. But the reward. What am I trying to say? This is a big clue to giant killers. Giant killers focus on the reward more than the risk. Giant killers are focused on the reward. Tell me, what will I get when I win this battle? You get the daughter, you get the riches, and you get to live a tax-free life. Why does the Bible take three verses to say it again? Because when you get in the battle, the enemy wants you to focus on the wrong thing. Focus on the reward. I said focus on the reward, church. Focus on the reward. Get your eyes on the prize. Amen. I'm telling you that the battle is worth fighting for. It's worth standing up to hell when it comes in. It's worth saying no to evil. It, it, uh, and you're not going to have my house. You're not going to have my marriage. It's worth it. I said it's worth it. I just want to preach for a few minutes this morning. Come on. It's worth it to tell you that the streets of gold will be worth it. And the gates of pearl will be worth it. And living eternal life is going to be worth it. It will be worth it all. Hallelujah. There is a heaven and there is a hell. But get your eyes on the prize this morning. Hallelujah. It's worth fighting for. It's worth living right. It's worth keeping your family in church. It's worth all the struggles and all the things that we go through to get our families to heaven. It's okay to miss some, some meals and fast for an unsaved loved one. We need to do that. Amen. It's worth the fight. Focus on the reward. No more sorrow. No more pain. No more death. Get your eyes off the risk and go to the reward. Hallelujah. Heaven is going to be worth it all. Is there a witness in the house? Heaven is going to be worth it all. There is a reward. 
And you know what? There's something greater than heaven and something worse than hell. What, what could be greater than, than going to heaven? And, and something worse than going to hell? Something greater than heaven is to get to heaven and turn around and see your family there. Amen. There's something greater uh, than making it to heaven. It's getting my family there. Amen. There's something worse than going to hell is knowing that, that uh, perhaps my family followed me there. That's worse. Because I wouldn't take a, a stand and, and I wouldn't fight the giants that came. Let me give you another one. Notice what else. Not only were they focused on the reward, but in verse 34 and, and, and 35 in the text, he said something pretty powerful. If you can put verse 34 and 35 on there. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and, and slew him. Notice this about giant killers. If you're going to be a giant killer, number six, you have to be the same in the dark as you are in the light. Giant killers are the same in the dark as they are in the light. Notice what he was saying. Before I ever got there to the, that national scene uh, where the nation is watching me about to go out and fight this giant, what I did in the dark when, when, when nobody was looking is I, I fought that lion, and I, I, I fought the bear, and that was his personal battle. You, you have to defeat that person personal lion and that bear before you can go out and fight Goliath. If you can win in the dark in your life, it's a matter of time before great victory will be manifested in the sunshine of your life where everybody can see it. Amen. It was the secret battles that David was winning, that David was defeating, that he said, I fought the lion and the bear when nobody else was looking at me but God. In other words, this speaks, my brothers and my sisters, this speaks of character. This speaks of character. Amen. There must be a call to character if you're going to be a giant slayer. If you want to be in public and slay giants and do great things for God, it's all dependent upon character in the private arena with a lion and with the, the, the personal bear. With 82 million porn sites on the web, there must be a call to character. If you read the story, the Bible said that they, they, they tried to get David to wear Saul's bulky armor. If you're going to they, they said, put on Saul's armor if you're going to do this. I, I, I don't have two wardrobes. I don't act one way over, over here and, and one way. And then when I'm on the saints, I don't have to play uh, two lists on my phone. One filled with blank this and blank that. And, and over here, when I get around the saints, I, you know, I just like to praise in the, in the worship. I can't wear two wardrobes and become a giant killer. I got to be what I am in the dark and what I'm in the light. Amen. And when those two match up, you are a force for hell to deal with. I said you are a force for hell to deal with. Come on, we got to get our lives right if we're going to slay giants that come our way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm getting close to, to finishing here. But number seven, do you know what he said? He said, I slew the lion, I slew the bear, and I'll kill this un, what? Circumcised Philistine. 
By the way, that's an Old Testament way of cussing somebody out. If you really wanted to cuss somebody out and stay holy, you would call them in the Old Testament uncircumcised, which meant you're not in the covenant. You're not in the covenant. Circumcision was a mark of the covenant, which meant David was really saying, when, when I was eight years of age, which they still do in the, the Jewish culture, they circumcised the male babies at the age of eight days. And when I was eight days old, I was more powerful than that giant because I had God's covenant sign on me. Hallelujah. Notice this. Number seven, giant killers see their trials as training. I said they see their trials as training, not trouble. He didn't look back and mope about it. Oh, I killed the lion. It was hard. I killed the bear, and it's hard. He almost killed me. He said, I fought the bear, and it was just training. I said, it was just training. I fought the lion, and it was training. Giant killers don't see their battles as trials. They see it as training. You will not kill a giant by complaining about every little lion and every little bear that comes your way that you had to fight. I've never seen a moping giant killer. I've never seen a joyless giant killer. But when you say God was with me when I fought the lion, God was with me when I fought the bear, God was with us when we didn't have anything, why would we doubt him now? We're fighting a giant uh, in whatever situation that we're in, uh, a family situation, a fina financial situation, whatever it is, it's your giant. But do you know what? Do you know what? Everybody hear me. Do you know what? There's a record in the book. I said, there's a record in the book for me to look at. And I know that the lion was defeated. And I know that the bear was defeated because there's a record. And I'm going to go to this Goliath knowing that we're, we're coming back stronger than ever. Hallelujah. I wonder if we could just take a praise break in the house right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, God. Thank you for your power. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for helping us with the with the giants in our life. Thank you, Lord, for helping us defeat the lion. Thank you, Lord, for helping us defeat the bear. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Now watch this. I'm going to give you a number eight. It's in verse 39. Can you get that up for me? And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he has said to go, for he had not proved it. And David said, well, Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Amen. I like what David said. I can't take this stuff. I haven't tested it. Do you know what he was saying? Number eight, giant killers have to be themselves. Giant killers have to be themselves. I can't be you. You can't be me. God didn't anoint me to, to, to be something that I'm not. And I know that uh, my, my, my little raggedy slingshot doesn't look as shiny and, and, and as beautiful as uh, your kingly sword. But this is what God gave me. This is the gift that God gave me. Hallelujah. And when the anointing is on it, I said, when the anointing is on it, it's powerful. Hallelujah. He's going to anoint you to be you. Praise God. Giant killers get that revelation. I don't have to be like them. I don't have to be like this world to reach the world. The enemy wants to make you feel insecure about what you got. Just a sling. But it worked. I said, it worked. I want everybody to shout right now, I'm a giant killer. I want, you, I want to hear you shout. I am a giant killer. One more time. Hallelujah. Let me close with this in, in 
in verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The question is, why would David take five stones? He's only fighting one giant. Because I believe the lesson in this, in this is maybe the most important. Giant killers are determined. Giant killers are determined. I believe that he had the mentality, if I don't kill you with my first stone, I got four more. And I'm going to keep on trying. And I'm going to get another one out. And if, if, if fasting didn't get you, I got prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. And if prayer and fasting didn't get you, uh, didn't get this nightmare answered in my life, uh, then I got another stone. And I'm going to call up three Holy Ghost filled people. And I'm going to uh, have them pray that know how to pray and talk in tongues. And I'm going to get them behind this. Hallelujah. And if that didn't work, then bless God, I'm going to give my tithes and I'm going to give my offering like I've never given it before. I got all kinds of stones in my pocket that I'm going to get out against the devil. Hallelujah. And I am determined I'm not going to quit until this giant falls. Is there a witness in the house of your giant? Are you going to be determined not to quit until that giant falls in your life? And I think the number uh, five was the, the, the most that, that he had ever missed before in, in, in his life trying to get something. I think, I think he took all that he had ever missed that many times. And he said, you know what? I, I'm, gonna, I'm going. And if I don't get him with the first rock and the second rock or the third rock, I'm going to keep on. But I'm not going to quit until this giant falls. Church, you got to have some backup stones. I said, you got to have some backup stones in your life. Hallelujah. Watch this. The Bible says that he goes out, he, he throws that stone, and when he hits Goliath, that giant goes down because giant killers are submitted. They, they are disciplined. Giant killers get up. Giant killers are shatters. Giant killers are the same character in the darkness as they are in the light. Giant killers see trials as training. Giant killers got to be themselves. They wear and use what God gave them. And giant killers are focused on the reward. Amen. Giant killers are determined. But lastly, giant killers take authority over the enemy. Do you know that you got authority over the enemy in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. The Bible says that when he knocked Goliath down, he took Goliath's own sword. I got to thinking about this last night. They tried to fit David with the armor and that kingly sword, whatever it was. Can you imagine how big Goliath's sword was? It must have been big to fit his size, and it must have been heavy. And the... The Bible says that when he knocked Goliath down, he took Goliath's sword, and he went ahead and just cut off that giant's head with his sword. He picked up Goliath's head after he defeated him, and it, he took it back to his tent, the Bible says, for a little while, and it, it ultimately ended up in, in Jerusalem. He broke the curse and took, over, took authority over the devil for future generations because remember whoever lost or won that battle it would affect generations to come when he does something then he does something strange he takes that head he, he puts it on a, a spear uh, in his tent and I think he was saying you know that head re represents authority that head re represents authority and he was saying devil 
I, I fought out there on, on the battlefield. But there's some devils in my own house. And I'm going to take authority right here in my own tent. Amen. Right here in my own family. I'm not fighting with flesh and blood. I'm fighting with the, the sword of the Spirit, the power of Satan that has come in, in like a flood to destroy uh, my, my life and, and my family. I'm taking authority over it right now in Jesus' name. Is there a witness in the house? I'm not going to ignore it anymore. I'm not going to ignore it anymore. I have the authority. Amen. I am a giant killer, and I have big authority in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And it, does, it doesn't just work in church, but I can take authority over the giant in my house. Can you imagine sitting over in his, his corner in that tent was the head of Goliath, and he's laying there saying to the devil as a, as a symbol, you have no authority. You have no authority, devil, in my house. You have no authority in my marriage. You have no authority in my family. Devil, you have no authority in my finances. And whatever you're struggling with this morning, the devil does not have any authority in your life if you'll turn it over to Jesus. Hallelujah. I have a covenant. And what you meant for my evil, God is going to use it for my good. Amen. I need you to get up on your feet. And I need you to put your hands together and give God the praise this morning in the house. If you believe that, that he's here this morning with authority, hallelujah. Go ahead and praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, right here, right now. If you're here this morning and don't have authority, uh, you don't have the Holy Ghost authority, the, the Holy Ghost is here this morning. You can have the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The Bible says it is a gift. The Bible says you need to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now that's some authority, church. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord as they sing. Praise God. Altar's open if you'll come this morning.
come up? Brother Cole Grove, would you come up? We want to pray for our sister. She's been suffering with an illness for quite some time. And just shared with me, the doctor said, well, you know, end of August, you should be okay. Let's, let's pray that God would just completely heal her right now and that she will not have to continue to suffer with, with this illness anymore. I wonder if you could just reach out your hand and we're going to pray and claim healing in Jesus' name.
Well, praise the Lord. What an amazing move of God. Amen. Truly, like we sing, chains can be broken. You can be free. You do not have to be chained up by the world or by the devil. But it's going to take some effort on your part. You're going to have to get in and worship. And maybe this seems strange to some, but if you get in and you read your Bible, this is Bible. This is biblical. Amen. He is the king of kings. He's getting ready to come back. If we can't worship him here, how can we possibly worship him in heaven? I just love the Lord. I love what I'm feeling here this morning. We need to get ready. I don't know about you, but I don't just do this at church. I do this at home. Because you know what? I'm not going to allow the devil to take away my freedom. Because I do have authority over him. And I do have authority over my home. And I'm going to pick on you, fathers. You need to stand up, and you need to come against the devil. You need to be on your knees daily for your children, as well as the moms as well. But fathers, you have a responsibility because it's not just about you. You're responsible for all your children. We need to make sure that we're training them up. We need to make sure we're getting them to heaven for their reward and your reward. I'm excited for heaven. I'm excited to see those streets of gold. And I just love the Lord, and I'm thankful for what I felt this morning. We do have a dinner downstairs, so we're going to pray. We're going to dismiss. We're going to pray over the meal. Give us a few minutes to finish putting it together and getting it out. And um, we just want to, again, say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for a mighty move of God this morning. Thank you for moving.